Hello and welcome back to another Q&A video where today we're going to be talking about what we used to do, what our past careers were, because for many months now people have been asking what are our backgrounds, what did we used to do, are we architects, do we work in the building trade, many related kind of things. So we're going to talk about that today and talk a little bit about how the things that we used to do are now helping us with the things that we do now. So let's get into it. Oh, I'm trying to fight my way through the plants this here. This plant is almost as big as me. Yeah, but you're really small. Look at this massive one. And I really like these fatter cucumbers rather than like the long, thin continental ones. I'm not going to make a Don't read anything into that. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking career stuff, past life. So I was definitely not a cucumber grower. Or a gardener. Uh, architect? No, it's not an architect. Someone else said plumber? No, not a plumber. Although you have been trained as a plumber. I have some training as being a plumber. You did a weekend course. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I have a degree in IT. Um, way back when, so when I left high school, I had not touched a computer, yet I went into doing a degree in IT. I don't remember why, how that happened. Traditional software engineering programming. Um, but then in my first job, I cross-trained into being a database computer person. Um, That's the specific job title. It is. <laughs> the, the more specific job title that evolved, I think, after a couple of years was Oracle DBA. And I've been that for, or was that, for over 20 years. Um, and probably the last 10 of those was spent working for primarily for large investment banks because they have very large computer systems that need Oracle DBAs, but also with large retailers and telecommunications companies. So all of the big companies that have big uh, database systems that need high levels of transaction processing. It was very technical, boring. I was very... You were good at it, but you yeah, didn't enjoy it. I, that's it. I, I got very good at it because after 20 years, you would hope that you were good at it. I was just intrinsically good at it. My brain is able to do that kind of stuff, just like it likes doing maths. But I didn't really enjoy it, and I wanted out. But what's interesting about that is that particular job, um, so it's primarily a support role, so you're on call all the time and solving problems, um, and that problem-solving skill set moves to many other careers obviously but also is really good in the renovation field so that when you come up with a problem you're like oh it's not just oh we can't do it it's like how can we do it and so that problem solving skill is a really valuable one that we've taken to this project as is i think the planning that goes into a lot of the work that i used to do planning releases and planning solutions to problems um, that kind of planning has has come across to this kind of work as well um, and being able to make decisions very quickly and calculate risk all of that goes really well with these kinds of projects um, so yeah very different application of those skills but the skills still apply listening to you say all of that standing in the middle of all this greenery <laughs> just it's worlds apart yeah i mean i would never want to go back to that job because now i've experienced the new world of excellent living much more i mean i wouldn't even say this is work-life balance this is just life balance <laughs> um yeah and so we're in mid 2022 when did you stop working uh, so we had a plan to, for me to stop working by the end of 2020, I think was, yeah. yeah. And then the employer or the contractor that I had in early 2020. No, 2019. Was it 2019? Yeah. Okay. I had a contract in 2019 <laughs> um, that naturally came to its conclusion in March. And we decided that at that point I could stop working. It was amazing. And so I have not worked since then from an employer. So I'm not, I mean, this is work, right? Um, but I've not been employed since then, which has been a, a godsend. My sanity has returned. The stress levels well, disappeared. Well, you say that. Different kind of stress, let's say. Different kind of insanity. Different kind of insanity. <laughs> yeah, but a lot more enjoyment in life, um, which is what our whole plan was all about, was living life not just treading water 
So Kylie pretty much had one career for, what, 20 odd years. Mine was a bit more varied than that. And my first, my first attempt at a career was actually to work in the film industry. From a very young age, when I was at school, I used to spend a lot of time playing around with my friends, making films, and uh, they were all terrible, quite frankly, but it was a lot of fun. And that sparked a, a passion for, not actually for film so much, but just that was probably where my making stuff first came from. And so whilst I was at university in Edinburgh, I tried to pursue a career in film kind of side by side. So I worked as a cameraman for, for about five years. I even have a page on IMDB, although not in anything you've ever heard of. Although I did used to do the Steadicam op for uh, Darren Brown, who is a fairly well-known magician sort of person in the UK. And that was a really cool show to work on, but I really struggled to make a living doing that. So I went looking for something else. And I guess still in the vein of making stuff, I transitioned into working online. So I taught myself programming to be a web developer. And so I actually did a bit of a hybrid of design and writing code to build all kinds of different websites, primarily quite creative ones in the food space, food and drink, travel, luxury kind of markets, which was again, really good fun. And I did that for probably getting on for 10 years, was it? So about 10 years here and there, but I started off writing a lot of code and working for clients or in the agency world. But then that kind of slowly transitioned into more of a education role. And I started teaching other people how to learn these languages, lots of JavaScript, PHP, Ruby, HTML, CSS, lots of uh, quite geeky a stuff. Ge geeky stuff. Yes. <laughs> uh, writing lots of code, um, but teaching a lot as well. So I used to teach evening classes with a company called General Assembly, who are like an international training organization, uh, upskilling people in for the modern workplace, I think is one of their terms that they use. I was working during the day, I was moonlighting as a teacher and was really enjoying that. So then I kind of swung almost full circle into purely teaching in person and remote, teaching inside corporations as well as teaching uh, people who want to you know, advance their career. And now I'm here in my vegetable garden where there is no code and no one to teach other than myself. <laughs> I guess I am the student now. But what's really interesting is how some, if not all of that has featured in what we're doing now. So we're making videos. Uh, I had previous experience with cameras and microphones and editing software and stuff like that. So that's really helped, I think, with the, with the YouTube stuff. There isn't much code or much tech to speak of in what we're doing at the moment, but we are eventually gonna be building a smart home, which is something that I'm quite looking forward to. But the teaching is still playing a big role because something that we like to do with these videos is not so much do like how-to content, because for the most part, we have no idea what we're doing, but we like to document what we're doing and the things that we're experimenting with and the things that we're learning, because that's also like a form of teaching. And something that a lot of people mention in the comments is uh, how they enjoy how we communicate and how we communicate with each other, but also how we communicate to you in terms of what we're doing and why and how and the things that, the things that worked and the things that didn't and what we've learned from it. So that's definitely factored in in a big way. And then another aspect of the teaching stuff is we don't do it so much here on YouTube, but in the Make Do Grow Club, that's where we're putting together a lot more of this instructional how-to, step-by-step kind of stuff. And it's something that I really enjoy doing. I like writing up a lot of the projects that we've done uh, to go into a bit more detail, much more detail than we can go into in a 15, 20, 30 minute video. And it's another creative outlet for us. So we really enjoy putting all that stuff together as well. And in the future, we plan to do uh, things like workshops, uh, whether that's in person or online, and just continue to share as much of what we're doing here to perhaps inspire people like you. Um, we are gonna do a video about our renovation experience, but there's a lot to talk about there. So we won't try and shoehorn that in here as well. So since we're in the garden answering this question and we have some gardening to do, we thought we'd show you a bit of that as well, because these cucumber plants are getting a little bit out of control. So something that we've tried to do with this one in particular is have one like main central stem that goes up, uh, training it up these, these uh, strings here, which 
can be buried in the ground when you plant, but we didn't do that, so we've just kind of tied it on at the bottom. But uh, this plant here, for example, is kind of going big and bushy because it's got lots of these side shoots. You can see like this piece here, this piece here, and here, and here. These are all like growing points on this plant. Um, there is there is like a main vertical leader or main shoot, but it puts off all these side shoots. And it puts a lot of energy into growing all those things instead of growing cucumbers. Uh, so we're gonna do a bit of pruning. And then some of the other plants that we've got, these these ones down here, for example. So these ones are a, uh, a special variety that I primarily for making um, gherkins so that we can do some pickling. So they, I don't know if we leave them longer if they'll get bigger, but this is kind of the ideal size, maybe a little bit bigger than this. And these are going mad. Trellising these in two different ways to see what works best, again, because we like to experiment. So these ones we're gonna string up, and then we've got some on the bamboo canes over there, and they need to be attached to the cane just to help them to grow up. I feel like it's gonna get a little bit busy on the obelisk. <laughs> <laughs> but I think here is gonna get busy too, so. Yeah, it is. Um, we'll see. And something else that's going on here, which I didn't anticipate, is I planted some marigolds from seed. <laughs> yeah, let me show you these. <laughs> and they're massive. So this is the cucumber plant, so try not to. Oh, wow, yeah, okay. He's, we'll have to do a bit of pruning there. Yeah, he's attaching himself to the marigold. But yeah, you've got a knee-high marigold. Yeah, and we bought some from the store because these weren't ready in time when we planted our tomatoes out. If you come with me. <laughs> this is turning into a mini garden tour. <laughs> We are going to do a garden tour in a few weeks though. So this is the one I bought from the store and I think it had three flowers on when I bought it. And you can see this one actually needs these to be deadheaded and I can get the seed from that. But check out, these are the little bugs that are going on here instead of on our tomatoes. Um, but these are really small, so they must be a different variety. I'm definitely going to stay, save some seed from this because I would like to grow some smaller ones for next year. And this is, the one, again, this is the one that I planted from seed. Huge difference, just different variety. Um, so I have these two, and I have two at the top of that bed, and then there's some more. And I still have some, some more seedlings. I'm going to plant them out today, probably in between. Um, yeah, there's was, a few spaces. I saw on Charles Dowding, he ha almost has one marigold plant at the bottom of each tomato plant. So next year, that's uh, that's a big ask. Lots and lots of marigolds to grow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very cool. But his were not this big. Okay. I would weave it first and then tie it. You think? I find it easier to do it this way. Yeah. That's okay. just me, maybe. Well, we'll see. This is the main leader. 